Uh, welcome to our meeting tonight. Uh, we've got uh, quite a presentation, or actually presentations. Uh, we actually have a special guest with us here tonight, uh, Matt Paulseth, who will actually be doing starting the uh, presentation a little bit later. Uh, help kick off winter steelhead season. He's going to show us the tricks of the trade, uh, tips that he's learned over 15, 20 years, and has put together a winning pattern for catching uh, uh, fish, steelhead, and salmon all, in all seasons. Uh, but uh, with all this rain we've had, when as soon as it stops, and, and a week after about, we should be starting to see some steelhead uh, that are in the coastal rivers that we can start catching. Uh, and Matt's been, uh, he's been an inspiration to a lot of the membership here because he's actually participated in a number of the Ask the Expert uh, sessions that we've held over several years. And uh, Matt's demonstrated how to tie, tie yarnies and a few other things that have helped people become better fishermen to catch more fish. And so Matt's going to uh, give you his years of experience. And he's just a young guy. <laughs> But it seems like he's been fishing since he's been about three years old, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> My dad can attest to that. Is that, is that <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> and anyway, but uh, we really appreciate Matt uh, for being able to be here tonight. Uh, I think he's one of the best fishermen I've ever run across in terms of being able to describe and show you and have an interest in helping you to actually catch fish. And that's what you're going to see here tonight is uh, demonstration techniques that will actually help you catch fish, not just simply buy gear. Um, so, and then we'll also have, later on, we'll have uh, Sam join in on, on the jig. So, Matt, take it away. All right. So, to touch on what Jim talked about earlier about the Sandy Am Summer Steelhead thing, this year was an amazing year with the return of the scattered plants. Did anybody in this room fish that like September, October? I know you did. It was, it was good. So that's something to look forward to, is uh, a nice long season on a lot of river instead of how it has been. So on that note, talk about some winter steelhead. So start off with the rod. I use the nine and a half foot, six to 10, light action spinning rod. Um, I found that most of the fishing I do, and just for ease of taking people, a spinning rod pretty much suits every every application, and it can be can be adapted to, to you know use for anything basically. Um, <clears throat> winter steelhead, we like the high vis line, you know, do a lot of side grip, and that's mostly that's how what I like to do, and it. It produces fish. It's you're covering a lot of water. You're picking out the biters. You know you're seeing different scenery all day. It's not getting boring. You're not getting you know cold. Just sitting there. There's a lot of movement. A lot of action. Um, I run a like a 3,000 size reel. It holds about 140 yards of line, which is plenty. Uh, a little bit smaller size works too. Um, you know small. I run small presentations. I mean, this even winter time. This is all I use a 175 shot, like a num number, like five balls in a slinky, and a small snap swivel, down to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. And this is just your basic drift fishing rig. You got the slide and corky on there, and with this light presentation, side drifting, it just you can cast it out. You're not in contact with the bottom all the time. You're not getting snagged all the time. You're just floating at a nice, e even pace. And that thing is down there na acting naturally. And it, it really picks the fish off uh, when, when you do it right. Um, so this one's just a, number, a size two hook with a slide corky, you know, 10 pound line, 10 pound leader. You know, the stuff is, Fairly inexpensive compared to uh, like a lot of like plugs and stuff for the fish, um, which I don't do at all anymore. I found this to be so much more effective all the time in more conditions than plug fishing. I just stuck, just did away with it. So here's another configuration I've got. This one's the same except I've changed my corky to where it's not sliding anymore. So this is going to keep. 
The cork is always going to be at the hook and always keep your bait floated correctly. The sliding corky is more adapted to a drift fishing scenario where you're casting from one spot and drifting down. This is always there. That one will float away from your bait. <clears throat> and summertime, same exact setup. We'll drop down to a clear line uh, just for that little bit of assurance that we're not spooking those fish in the low water and stuff. And Matt, you're yeah. hooking that below you hooked your corky? Yeah, just tie into the back of it. Oh. And I can show you how to do that. Well, I thought some guys are going to the one with the corky above your hook away. Yeah, some guys, uh, they'll pin it above. I like to pin it in the back because not only is this going to give me flotation at my hook, but it's also going to be a contrasting color to my bait. It's going to be something that you know, fish sees one constant color, it's not that big of a deal. Fish sees two colors completely opposite of each other. Say I got a dark red bait on here with a really light corky, that's gonna pop. That's gonna, that's gonna be, they pick two things out at the same time that's different. And that'll clue them into that. Just kind of like some of Sam's worms over there that have, you know, two or three different colors on them. It's a, it's a big break in contrast. So then we got a yarn, which is another, I mean, we're using a small amount of bait for the day as it is, and yarn's good to add to pretty much everything. I mean, you can add it to a two hook rig, a single hook rig, you know, you can use bait, shrimp, fake eggs, you know, whatever you want with it. And I just tar these little yarn balls, and you can... My favorite way is to slip them on the line or slip them in the egg loop if I'm not using eggs that day because there are those days where the fish will not eat eggs and it's got to be just, you know, they want to see something that's not so much the taste or the smell. Um, but you can add anything to that too. You can add a little, one of these little puff balls or just styrofoam, just stick it on the hook and fish it. Um, can you, Sometimes I'll add some of these fake eggs, which I'll be using for some of my demonstrations on there. Um, <clears throat> so, little piece of yarn, I mean, it's not a great big huge thing, but you'd be surprised in even the colored up water that those winter steelhead love it. And you can scent that to any scent you like, you know. You're not necessarily fishing with an egg scent, you can put shrimp scent on it, you know, any, whatever your favorite flavor is or you think it's gonna work that day, that'll work. So you're not stuck with one, one thing. The, uh, this is my favorite setup out of all of them. I feel that, you know, two hooks is always better than one. Um, Fishing with a corky in between. I put my bait on the top hook, which is a, it's actually a little bit different style of hook. It's a bass hook. It's a Gamakatsu wide gap. And they're size four, so I stepped down a size from those number twos. And then I use just a regular octopus hook on the back. Um, the hooks I use, I switched to these Mustads. They're a lighter wire than the Gamakatsu or the owners. So your stuff is actually, with that corky, will float just a little bit better um, with your eggs and stuff. But this, this setup right here, you're thinking the little tiny hook, when that fish grabs it, I mean, that's, that's two shots right there, rather than, than one. And there's a lot of times you've only got them by that little back hook. All and these are side drifted setups? Yeah. Side yeah. And I'll use them, you know, I'll park and throw a little bit heavier weight on and I'll sight and I'll, I'll park and drift fish and stuff too. And any of these setups can be adapted to bobber dogging, which I'll cover here in a, in a minute. Um, this one's actually got a sliding slinky on it. Some guys prefer that. I really haven't found a huge advantage to it uh, most of the time. The one thing I do think it does when you get into the lower stretches of the river, 
and you're covering a lot of water is that your bait will pick one current, your weight will be in another, and they'll walk away from each other. And, you know, possibly if there's, say this is like a little rock shell, rather than having your weight down here at the bottom and your eggs up here on top, this will come apart a little bit, and you'll be fishing down over here where the fish could be laying in that little trough. So that's about, I mean, that's the only reason I, I've thought of it. And of course, those are sticky sharp and they stick in the carpet really well. We wouldn't expect that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're these little tiny hooks too. The advantage of them is that with a small, fine wire, you know, as you as you're drifting, you know, you're you're fishing along. That fish will grab the bait, and a lot of times that that fish is hooked because you're most of the time in a downstream pull. That fish is hooked before you or the fish even knows it. Because, I mean, I think that the instant they grab it, that little tiny thing is, has caught something. So this is, this is my go-to when I fish bait. So, and these are, these setups work good on a lot of the rivers on the coast and a lot of the, uh, the inland rivers, you know, where you're fishing out of a drift boat. Um, a lot of guys bank fish, they'll use the same setup with just a, head, a little bit heavier weight. And you, you know, if you got a stretch, you can walk along and do it, or you know, just cast and drift fish with it. Works really well. Um, but over the over the years, I've always tried like, you know, a lot of the things that have just bought the fishermen and not, you know, not the fish. They're just, oh, I gotta have this. It's nice and shiny, and I always come back to to fishing bait or fishing yarn, I mean, <clears throat> or jigs, and jigs is one of them I fish a lot too, because it, it's a, you know, an imitation, just like a, <coughs> if it takes a bait or a yarn or a shrimp or something, they'll eat. Um, so this setup here is a little bit different. This is one, we're going to fish, uh, we're going to fish it when the water's low, we're going to fish it in little bit smaller water or rocky bottoms, you know, snaggy stuff. You don't want to be losing gear in all day. You're going to fish it in situations where there's boats all over the place and you need to just pull over and find a spot and fish for a while. This will fish a couple different ways. Um, one of the ways it'll fish is it'll fish vertical. You set your, your, uh, bait or yarn or whatever you got to what you think the depth is you set your bobber right at it and you're fishing you know just like with one of those with one of sam's jigs it, it'll just it'll fish right there the other way to apply it is to set your bobber really high you know you say the river you think it's six seven feet so you just pull this thing up and go like 10 feet on it, you know, way up there. So now you're fishing and all your, your bobber is way out front and you're just dragging your weight across the bottom, which I could probably do a better job just drawing it out, but I think I'll do that, I'll just draw it on the board. But what it's doing is essentially you're, you're drift, drift fishing or side drifting and your bobber is doing most of the work. This works really good when you're fishing stuff that's uneven. That head, little bit heavier weight, that's a five ounce, five eighth ounce bobber and a five eighth ounce weight. And then I just use a split shot to help keep the yarny where I think it needs to be. 